Greetings, everyone. My name is Isaac Proach, and you're listening to My Thoughts On, the short-form podcast hosted by none other than Isaac Proach myself. Today's episode, we're going to be focusing on Game Dev Story Plus by Kyrosoft Co. Limited. I believe that's how you pronounce and say all of those suffixes to their uh, business name there. And um, I I was thrilled to see the Game Dev Story uh, Plus in particular, and and you're seeing a pattern here with the Apple Arcade games getting that plus added. I I, um, am late to the Game Dev Story boat. I remember in high school hearing uh, just quite a few industry people and some other, uh, you know, Greg Miller, IGN, that, that whole crew that I was listening to. Uh, I remember them talking about Game Dev Story quite a bit when it first came out, and they loved just sort of the uh, the tycoon-esque themed stuff that was coming out of this company, this game development studio. And I remember watching um, some gameplay clips of it, but never actually trying it. I think back then I was I was more broke boy, so I didn't have um, I wasn't I wasn't buying mobile apps on my phone that much. And yeah, so fast forward to 2023 and uh, or 2022 when I first started playing this on Apple Arcade, uh, Game Dev Story Plus pops up on there, and I was thrilled because I it was the perfect opportunity. Uh, I think that the the gameplay overall, with it being such an older game, is definitely a little outdated. I don't think it really hooked me as much as I'd wanted it to, or it didn't offer as many uh, just functionalities and different like mechanics tied to things that I was looking for. I think. Overall, though, the gameplay loop is still great. I think if you're, in particular, if you're like an indie game developer, you're a hobbyist, or you're just interested in this side of the industry, I think this is a cool kind of sneak peek into the different roles, the different uh, variables that go into play when it comes to development, and then also I, I love the uh, the contract work section of the game. There's basically two umbrellas to the gameplay. You have... Uh, in-studio development games, uh, the in-house games, and then you have the option uh, you can get contract jobs, which would be a variety of things. So you would have, I think a few of them were like, uh, d- micro games, you're doing QA for another company, you're developing later on it even gets up to the point where like you can get hired, contract to develop whole console hardware uh, pieces. So that's pretty cool. And yeah, it, it, it just it gives a good kind of sneak peek from the standpoint of a business owner and how game dev ebbs and flows. You'll get the different quarterly reporting and you can see how uh, some some of the, the phases of my game dev story, I was pumping out original games and then to kind of fill the gap in between those, I was taking on contract work to still keep payroll running. Uh, we were training and employ uh, training and improving employees and just getting staffing updates in between the game jumps so you can kind of track, okay, game seven. Uh, let me try and make some drastic changes to the studio to see if that reflects on the sales for game eight. And I think overall it, it's a cool feature. I think the, um, it, yeah, I, I, the reporting, that, that's where I was a little confused. Like, what, there's so many different variables that are into play. And when you're looking at the burnout of your employees, when you're looking at the quality of their work, when you can, e- even within different milestones of the game dev story, you're able to choose a writer or a developer or a, um, con- a story writer, the the audio engineer, all that stuff. You can choose in-house employees, but you can also outsource it. That usually costs more, but you could get um, potentially higher quality, especially as you're in the beginning phases of this game. Um, but yeah, I thought those metrics and the reportings and just sort of communicating to the player how each of those decisions is affecting your overall growth weren't communicated well. I wish there was a little bit more, and maybe I'm just not looking into the right menus, but from what I could find, there, there wasn't much there. I, I was just kind of a, a trial and error. You get to a, a, a game launch or you finish a contract job and you're still just a little bit confused. Uh, okay, what? why did this not do well in terms of polish, even though I, I dedicated points to polish or art and all of that stuff? Um, but yeah, so gameplay, I'm trying to think if there's anything else in particular to kind of bring up there um no you have incredible options in in controlling i think uh just wanting those mechanics kind of fleshed out more communicated a little bit more clearly to the player would have improved the gameplay loop here for me uh soundtrack so let's move into the audio side of things i think that the sort of the the bit tune uh soundtrack is great for this it matches the art style well it uh, definitely wasn't like as soothing or addictive as like a Minecraft or some of the classic like Nintendo, uh, like older retro games and their and their bit tunes there. Especially I'm thinking like Game Boy Advance, Game Boy, some of the original Game Boy like 
soundtrack stuff is just incredible really catchy really really addictive um and yeah I, I didn't really get that in this it definitely the audio i felt like there was a lot to be wanted with game dev story plus a little bit more there i wish that um another thing that would be cool is since you have a position in your game dev studio uh that has to do with audio soundtracking and working on your games like that i thought it would have been cool if as you increase the the training and the expertise of your position uh, of the employee that it would open up other opportunities to maybe change the music, customize different elements of the music or just uh, more unlockables tied to the actual like overview screen that you're looking at when you're managing things. Um, but yeah, I think it's also important for me to note, like with, with the timeline that this was built, mobile games were much different back then and mobile games. I, I mean, this type of mobile game is still very popular today, but just sort of the, the time filler, time killer in between doing activities or commuting home, public transport or whatever. Uh, it, it definitely has that kind of the feedback loop of like you, you would make your adjustments, you check in a couple times a day, but then otherwise you're just, you're putting down your phone and not really like actively playing game dev story. Uh, but yeah, so the, the soundtrack, I think uh, with that in mind, it makes a little bit more sense why they didn't really invest way more options to that because I don't think that most player bases or most players even myself i didn't find myself like sitting and just like watching the the time go and the, the sound play out from my game dev studio it was much more like in those couple checks a day uh yeah and so the the art the art style the the pixel art is amazing i think the the game and any of the cairo soft uh Kairosoft games so like excel in this just sort of the level of polish and really unique art style I think it's uh, definitely been attempted to be copied they've definitely pulled inspo from different places but overall I think that they have uh, just a great unique art style that sets them apart and and looking at the other games I forget off the top of my head the other names of them but the other games in their library you look at them and you're like oh this is in the same universe the same sort of ethos or universe of game dev story plus which is very cool I think it, it creates even more so just like a a meta concept of uh game dev story plus and as you're building it and then Kyrosoft is also releasing and growing their own game dev studio so we're all growing together with Kyrosoft here and uh yeah, so the the customization on the headquarters is, I think that excelled a lot more than any of the audio and the lack of audio customizations. You can change the look of your office, the front desk, you can change your the office chairs, um, even the layout of employees. And, and again, I don't know how much positioning your employees strategically really helps because I didn't find that metric, but it was trial and error. You can change, let's say you have an office with four desks, you can choose to put... Uh, the artists in side-by-side -side desk, you can put a programmer or a creative director next to a, an, uh, an audio artist or audio engineer, and then you can see, that I'm assuming there's uh, potential changes, pros and cons to how you position your employees within your headquarters. Um, and then, yeah, there, there's also sort of a challenge uh, system, like a weekly challenge is built in. They call them uh, bananas, the monk, like the banana... It's like the monkey jobs or monkey contracts. I'm not really sure why, but uh, it's a cool feature. We, so you get you get these challenges that are kind of like these bigger goals. It'll be really uh, like one example is like reach reach a million dollars in sales off of a game release. You check that off and then they reward you with a stack of bananas. So then those bananas are how you buy. That's the micro currency there to buy the customizations uh, within your office. So I was working toward those challenges, building the studio, and then as I hit certain checkpoints and was growing things, I then had the option to spend the bananas to change the look of the office from uh, normal everyday nine to five to the cool little like Cyber City or Tron theme, uh, which I think is currently what mine's in. Um, you can change it to like a Japanese garden. You can change, yeah, all of that stuff. So I thought that was really cool. I, I hope they, if, if they, if I imagine if they release sort of a game dev story plus or a game dev story sequel in today's ecosystem, they would have uh, just tons of options in terms of customization because that's really where the game shines as well of setting a, setting apart the progress. You can't see. In terms of the analytics and reporting of like the the sales and revenue your company's bringing in, it's cool to see written out on the screen, but it's not much in terms of a visual experience. Where the game really shines is where you see the the 
just the upgrades and how much different your studio will look from the beginning of your playthrough to the very end. Um, and then, yeah, with, with that being said, too, I don't know if there is, like, a cutoff. I, I think this game is just kind of continuously going. I don't think that there's ever, like, a cutoff where you reach the end of the campaign. I believe right now I'm in year 10 of the studio and that also reminds me it's a good segue into sort of one major gripe I have with the game is the pacing seems a bit odd in my opinion with how I felt like I needed to really get through the first like four years and just and maybe this is intentional because now that I'm saying this out loud it's kind of ingenious from a business owner standpoint um they really make it difficult within the first like four years four to five years you don't have much um, in terms of cash flow, you don't have many options. Your staff is low, and it was really difficult. Then you hit sort of, uh, uh, you cross that hill, you get over the five year mark, and I noticed things were snowballing more. I was getting bigger sales, game review, game reviews were coming in more positive, um, and yeah, just overall the the pacing on the back half of after five years, I think, is better. I think um, it definitely made it hard for me to kind of keep my interest in the beginning and wish that they would have sped up some of those things. Um, in terms of progression overall. And uh, the other thing with the progression, um, with the, so, so when you go to develop a game, you have these points that are basically skill points that you can allot to different aspects of development. So that can be realism, it can be the niche, it can be, um, I think one's just called like fun factor. Uh, and so you have limited, limited points to spend, obviously, and you're dedicating and kind of experimenting, seeing what will play out with, uh, okay, let's say if I just dedicate 100% of my resources into the soundtrack of the game versus the funness or the realism. And I just wish there was more reporting or metrics shown clearly of like how that effect played out when it comes to sales. Because then after you release a game, you get to a screen where there are, basically the, the journalists are writing or covering your game. You're getting like, I think there's five review scores that pop up. And you get sort of like their overview, their overall opinion. And it can affect the sales of the game, just like in real life, obviously. But then I noticed that there was just kind of a randomness to the review scores correlating to sales. Because another part of, another thing that you can spend money on is advertising. And throughout the the game progression, you'll have different conventions or events or opportunities to spend advertising and gain more of an audience around your your studio. Um and so I, I noticed later on in the game when the review scores were getting lower, but my audience size was just growing and growing because of the advertising spend. Um, I was still getting like substantial sales every single game release. So I think that's also probably an intentional design piece and pretty interesting just sort of uh, inner look at how how review scores can and cannot affect your, your sales as a game developer. Um, so yeah, su superb job by Kairosoft to really give us a, a cool interactive sneak peek into the game dev industry uh it's, it's really fun i think um i would have loved it in high school and love it even more now as i'm pursuing indie dev in different ways and will definitely i think uh, i i think uh, i would definitely say if if you're in sort of my niche of interest game dev story is a must play if you're not and if you're just a fan of tycoon games i'm sure there's other more developed and polished, like, fun experiences overall to play nowadays. But uh, this is also just a cool little time capsule in terms of mobile gaming for for this genre. Um, and then, yeah, the uh, overall, I uh, just really wouldn't say that I, I will continue playing this actively, but I'll definitely check in on Game Dev Story Plus throughout the next couple years probably. And just as I release my own games, I, I think I'll also kind of play this alongside and, and keep that growing. So I want to, I, I think I named my studio Digital Drez Studios, Digital Drez Games, and I'll keep that running in the game indefinitely, kind of like a Tamagotchi that, that never dies. Um, and, and actually, that's a, that's a good question I have. I wonder if you can... I imagine there is, but I haven't done it. I wonder if there's a way where like you can like tank your studio and it basically goes out of business and then you have to reset or how that works. Maybe you can you get a chapter eleven bankruptcy option and then you can just liquidate and keep on going, you know? I don't know. But uh, yeah, so I'll I'll end it there. Uh, I'm Isaac Proach, and those were my thoughts on Game Dev Story Plus by Kairosoft Co. Limited. Thanks so much to everyone tuning in and new episodes are incoming. I, I hope the uh, the framing for this should be substantially better from last episode. Hopefully, the visual accompaniment of this ep uh, the visual accompaniment uh, for the episodes is 
uh, improving overall watch times for people. And for those of you that are still just listening audio only, appreciate you as well. Any bit of support counts. Um, yeah, and then just also want to remind you guys, if you want to support further, I'll be having a a Patreon tied to Next Valley's YouTube channel, which is the uh, sort of the hub for all of this creative stuff as well. I, my thoughts on is being released underneath the Next Valley network. So I want to just continue to grow things there, run this as independently as possible, and just really continue to get sort of a community feedback loop of where things go, see what get, what uh, interests and is boring and avoid the boring stuff, continue to dive into the more engaging stuff for the community. So yeah, um, off that tangent, just yeah, keep an eye out for the socials. You'll get an update on Patreon going live and you'll see uh, all of the details there. So yeah, thank you so much. Talk soon. Peace.